a royal family with oblong-shaped heads, a cheerfully bizarre art style, and a ball with the power to roll up the entire cosmos. This quirky combination can only mean one thing. Katamari is back. Developed by Bandai Namco, Katamari is a cult classic PlayStation 2 game from the early 2000s about, well, rolling up stuff and turning it into planets, stars, and constellations. It's a bizarre premise that has a loyal fan following, so much that Reno, that's me, cannot shut up about the recently remastered game Wheel of Katamari Reroll plus Royal Reverie. What about this strange game has captured the minds and hearts of fans worldwide? And how does it fare almost 20 years since the start of the Katamari franchise? Watch on to find out. <laughs> Yeah, so I play this week. I play We Love Katamari Plus and Royal Reverie, which is a remaster of We Love Katamari from the PlayStation Two era. Uh, are you at all familiar with what Katamari is, is about? In concept, I am. Is and the only thing I know about Katamari is uh, just hearing the word Katamari, and I, like, I don't even know what that means. So the first question is, what does that mean? And the second thing is that you just roll up a you. bunch of a bunch of junk. <laughs> Literally, you just like your ball rolling sim, right? Like I don't know. So yeah, so you, you've, you've basically nailed it. So katamari in Japanese means clump, which is like the <laughs> most perfect uh, word or descriptor for this game, where you're a character who's just pushing, rolling this, I guess the only description for it is like a super ultra adhesive ball that picks up everything and the ball just gets bigger and bigger. And the, and I guess that is the, the goal for all most of these levels, which is like to build, to get as big of a katamari, a big of a clump as, as possible. And I think I, I don't know as much about the history behind the game. I know that the developer just really wanted like a cool, sort of like a cool mechanic that you could build upon. And so the story is a little bit unhinged and very secondary to, to the game, but it's, it's still, I think because it's so unhinged, it's become kind of meme worthy. So in the original game, which is called Katamari Damachi, you're, you're the prince of all cosmos and your father is the king of all cosmos and we'll have a, we'll have a, an image here that shows you what they look like because it's just insane. And basically your father gets really drunk one day and decides to just destroy everything in the universe. Like (laughs) all the planets, all the stars, everything's just gone. And then he like wakes up and he's like, Oh, uh, I kind of, I kind of messed up there. All right. Now (laughs) son time to rebuild the universe. And I don't know how um, that works because I thought everything, I think everything is gone except planet earth. So what you do is you're just rolling up crap all over Earth, and then your the king turns your katamaris, your clumps into planets. So he's re- rebuilding the universe. So this is the original plot. In We Love Katamari, you've already done the rebuilding, and for some reason, no one remembers that your father destroyed everything. So they're all like, "Oh, we're a big fan of the king." So you just kind of go around and um, help people with their with their problems, which all end up just being like katamari can can solve it for them. It's, and and what well. about it? Like outside of the story, I feel like, I mean, the story is one thing. I never hear anybody talk about the story of Katamari, <laughs> but what is it about this game? What is it about this franchise that makes it so revered uh, in the like the game's ecosystem and the people that play it? So I think, um, I, so I streamed it a couple of nights ago on Twitch and something a lot of my community members were just saying like, this game is so creative. I could never think of this in a million years. And it's, and it's so true. It's such a simple premise of just rolling up stuff, but to turn that into a game and to turn that into something so replayable is, is just genius. It's, um, it's really addictive gameplay as well uh, in the previous episode in the diablo episode actually we talked about you know jingles and and like so- sounds that give you that kind of hit of dopamine it's like that with katamari as you roll the ball and you pick up stuff there's like a little thuck, thuck kind of sound uh-huh. and then a little bit of a vibration kickback in your controller so it's so satisfying to roll up, roll things up and the bigger the things are the the again the more satisfying it is so it just keeps you in that loop and it's such a mindless game as well. So what I did while I've been sort of playing this game and reviewing it, like, you know, I call, I'm, I'm like calling my mom and we're just chatting on the phone and I'm just like playing because you don't need to think while you're doing it. And it's just like really relaxing, really low stakes. I think there's a mode in the game that's separate to all the levels in the story levels where it's just like infinite rolling. So you just keep going. The music is really relaxing. It's, it's, it's kind of weird at the same time. It's like the music is like katamari, katamari, katamari. Like, you know, like people are just repeating the phrase over and over and then some like Japanese words. Um, but then it's like a jazz rendition of Wheel of Katamari or like a punk edition of Wheel of Katamari. And it just, it just really kind of wholesome vibes, at least until you lose. So if you don't roll, if you don't uh, complete the mission of like getting your Katamari to that right size, you get, you get to this cutscene where your father is just like 
mad pissed at you and it's like thunderstorming and he's like all we wanted was this and you couldn't even deliver it's like it's like full asian dad like i am disappointed in you son this is the funniest thing um but yeah, I think that's I think that's why it's it's a game that people people love so much. It's com it's comforting. It's it's really funny. It's it, like zero stakes. Doesn't really require much skill to play, and just has like really really cute animation as well. So yeah, uh, I can definitely say we love Katamari. <laughs> I don't know if we love Katamari. <laughs> You I think, love I, think try. I think you should definitely give it a try. There is one level I want to talk about. <laughs> so, um, as I mentioned before, like, so you have, um, characters that are going like, Hey, Hey, and then you have to go up to them and they're like, Oh, uh, I need to clean my room, which, which makes sense. It's like, okay, well, the Katamari will kind of roll around in this sort of like trash room and you're just picking up all, all of that person's junk, right? This one particular group of characters, it's like a pair of siblings. And as you get into the level, you realize it's kind of a riff off Hansel and Gretel because they're like, um, a brother and sister and you're rolling up candy in this world. And there's like a witch flying around as well. And when you get big enough, you can roll her up too. But the objective of the level is, um, the siblings are like, we want you to roll a katamari big enough that you can roll us up. And like, you can roll people up in the game, but there's never like explicitly they're like, you know, outing, they, they've got some kind of kink, like, oh, roll us up, please. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so the level only ends when you've got them big enough that you can roll both of them up. <laughs> wow. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Thank you for, you know, doing them justice and giving them what they needed. Yeah. I, yeah. The, the wackiness of this is like, it just so reminds me of a certain era. I know we talked about, you know, previous games that reminded us of eras of game. This so reminds me of that like PS2 wacky era as well. Right. Where I'm also thinking about games like conceptually Katamari is in the same bucket as like Parappa the Rappa and like Patapon and like you know, these kinds of more independent experiences where, that are just such high cost concept just fun gameplay where uh it just reminds you of a certain time so i uh, it's almost as like katamari is like so much of a legacy game in my mind where i respect it so much but i've never played it but i'm so glad to hear that uh it seems like it is the, the it still works in a modern context you know so that these uh remasters and these uh is just justified yeah i mean i will say the remaster is uh, loyal almost to a fault to the original in that I didn't really feel there was anything new. I think the royal reverie part of the title just means that, um, your character, cause you get, you get the prince and then you can also get his like cousins, which you can use to, as in, they're basically just skins of the character that, that's pushing the ball. I think royal reverie means that like you can unlock the one where you play your father when he was a boy. So just like mini, mini king of all cosmos. But aside from that, I don't think there's too much different. So if you're, Kind of coming back into it as a as a previous Katamari player, um, you might be disappointed that there aren't there isn't anything new, or you might be like, oh great, I can now play Katamari again, but this time on like my new PC or my new Switch or something like that. But definitely, again, as we talked about before with like the Ace Attorney games, like remasters are not just for the nostalgia, not just for people like you and me who have that relationship. It's for the new generation, for the kids, <laughs> the kids of today to experience uh, an IP that's just been enduring, um, which is fantastic. Uh, it's so good to hear you talk about like yeah, you can kind of like sense the excitement, right, for games that are being revisited this way, and I'm so happy. But you're you're seriously that I'm happy it's for you. It's so <laughs> similar to Ace Attorney. It's like I'm so happy for I'm you. So happy all. for you. The you, emphasis yeah. on you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll obviously, like go through some footage and some B-roll for this. Obviously, right. But I mean. Um, yeah, it just seems like it's good to have at least remasters of games that are so beloved as well, because there are some properties where I feel like they're locked to a certain generation or a certain graphical uh, limits. So I love it when these, uh, it's not even obscure. This isn't an obscure, obscure title, but uh, I love it. The concept of having these like remasters um, go out to the public as well. And where even if it doesn't make like the biggest uh, statement in the world, it's like, it's still for the fans or some newer people who might jump into the title uh, or the series rather um, yeah. with these releases. Absolutely. Thanks for checking out our We Love Katamari Plus Royal Reverie review. For more discussions around games in 2023, check out the full episode of the podcast. <laughs>